What's up guys? Welcome to Let's Talk Epic. It's the place where you witness extreme celebs exposure. Our goal is to introduce to you the people who are rich and famous to keep you inspired and motivated. All right, today's guest is a very, very special person considered one of the prettiest women who holds a PhD. A social media sensation with her unique fashion sense, she effortlessly makes traditional attires look stunningly beautiful and chic. But hold on, she's not just a pretty face, she is a professor by profession. And right, if you still don't know her, you've got serious issues, guys. So please welcome the beauty with her brains, Nakala Mama herself, Dr. Teye. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. But how should I call you? Dr. Teye, Nakala Mama. Please, you can call me Teye. Or please call me Teye. Yeah. Why explain the name Nakala Mama? Why Nakala Mama? Or, um, I mean, why not doc, Mrs. Dr. Beauty Queen or <laughs> what's that? Um, I wanted to uh, keep a distinction between uh, my private Instagram account. I have a private Instagram account. Mm. And when I started this uh, new account, I wanted to keep that separate. And so I decided I'd make up a name. And since I was a mother who was wearing meklas, I just put Mekla Mama together. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. You are a fashion icon, obviously. You're a mother, right? Yes. And you are a working mother. I want to ask you first off, how do you balance your schedules, your life, your routine? How do you balance it? Because... I, um, I'm, I try and be punctual. I think that's very important. Mm. Uh, so I plan out my day. I have very specific timings. And uh, when I make commitments, I... Um, set a time and then I try and keep the time and that allows me to do many things in a day mm. um, and yeah otherwise I'm just always just trying my best to do the best I can mm -hmm. you're a professor at a reputed college come back home tired with the kids I mean and still looking as good as picture-perfect how do you manage that's what that's, I wonder I'm not what do you say, say Madam? <laughs> exactly she's got yeah. several lives I, that's what I thought so I, I don't really come back tired. I think one of the things that I do is uh, I try and stay healthy. Right. Because then that allows me to um, have stamina to take care of my work and my private life. And you look very healthy. And your socials. Yes, your social and my life. social life. Huh. Also, yes. Yeah. You look much better in person. You're picture perfect, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, why? Obviously, Makala Mama, like you said, you're a social media sensation. But why traditional wares? Why do you rock them? This is looks good on you, but thank you. This is an interesting question. You know, one of the reasons. Uh, see, I've always liked meklas, and I've always uh, enjoyed wearing them. As a kid. Um, yes, as a young girl also. Mm. So from the time I was eighteen, I decided that instead of wearing Western wear to church, I would wear meklas. So from the time I was eighteen, I would wear meklas to Sundays. Um, but then when I started working in Kohima, uh, I decided to wear my class every day to work. And uh, one right. of the reasons I chose to do that is because uh, I used to go to the my class shops here in Kohima mm -hmm. and uh, just check out the my class. Right. And one day one of the women told me it, how wonderful it was to see me coming uh, regularly, but also how rare it was for younger women to come and see my class. And she said that, you know, young women don't come and buy meklas anymore. Mm -hmm. And if you all don't buy meklas, people will stop buying meklas and maybe people will stop weaving. And that was something that was like a wake up call for me. Because Forget I, forgetting the culture and tradition. Exactly, uh, because this is something uh, I really, uh, I really enjoy Naga textiles. And, right. you know, one of the most special things about our Naga culture is our textiles, you know. Absolutely. You know, we're famous for the, these right. things and right. they're so crucial to our identity. So for me to imagine that maybe we would get to a point where women would stop weaving and we would completely lose this huge part of our culture was very disturbing and that galvanized me to start wearing meklas every day one but also to try and convince other people why don't let let's all of us wear let's all of us create demand yeah let's make it fashionable again sure you know and then also ensure that we 
uh, create income for our weavers because you know even if you're a very good weaver mm -hmm. if you can't earn a living if there's no buyers exactly if you can't earn a living where weaving meklas then right. who which woman will continue weaving absolutely mm. uh -huh. So it's like fashion with a mission. Absolutely, yeah. yes, absolutely. Mm. It's a major chore putting on those things. Is it difficult to put them on and put them off again? No. no. I mean, I, I believe jeans will be more comfortable as so. well. That's or, again a very I mean, how interesting do you? idea. Uh, I think. Uh, you don't have a problem wearing them? Not at all. And I think it comes with practice, you know, anything. Uh, it comes with practice. Practice makes perfect. But uh, also. Just to think about our ideas of what is comfortable, you know, when we think about why, why do you feel that something is comfortable on your body and why do you feel that something is not comfortable? And for us, Nagas, I think it ties into, you know, a whole, not just Nagas, but I think all colonized people, our relationship to our dress is also part of the way that we have been colonized, you know, so that if you think about Nagas and the many generations uh, who have ahead of us, who have functioned and created and built this wonderful society and culture wearing these clothes, and suddenly after colonization, you have, you know, again, a generation of Nagas who say, oh my gosh, we find it so uncomfortable to wear our attire and I'm much more comfortable <coughs> maybe, like you said, in a pair of jeans, mm -hmm. then you need to question. How is it I mean, where all our ancestors extremely uncomfortable as they carried out their daily duties wearing traditional clothes? And I highly doubt that. Yeah. So sometimes I think it's, uh, it's an opportunity for us to have conversations with our own bodies and to think what are, why, what are the reasons why we now think that our traditional dress is uncomfortable and okay. why we think that Western dress is comfortable? You know, is it possible that it's just something to do with our mind with our subconscious yeah uh -huh. and perhaps if we decolonize our thinking yeah. we may come to have a better and more comfortable relationship with our traditional mm. attire mm. don't you think a pair of versetes will be more comfortable than <laughs> i'm just saying yeah i'm just saying <laughs> you've got about 20 case you're quite famous on instagram yes Absolutely. you've got a huge fan following social media now plays a huge part in your life. It I mean, kind of, you have mm. to be consistent, mm. yeah. keep updating your post, mm -hmm. going back to work. Mm -hmm. Does it affect you or, I mean, you have to keep a track on your account as well? Uh, How I, do you do that? See, the thing is, my account is actually quite simple. You know, I think I'm a little different from perhaps other content creators on mm -hmm. uh, social media because I don't actually create my content per se, full time, you know? All of us have to dress up to mm -hmm. go to work. So for me, it's just... just every, every day you take them. Right, I just, I just dress mm. to go to work and either it's before I go to work or after I go to work, I get somebody, usually it's my daughter, right. you know, sure. or one of my children, they just take my photos and then I just post it. So it's just that once in a while, perhaps if I decide to write something like, for example, today I wrote a pretty lengthy uh, caption, then I may spend a little more time. But other than that, I, I don't, I won't say waste time, but I don't invest so much time in my social media um, content because it's very important for me to keep my real life real mm -hmm. and my yes. online life online. You know, I think right. it's, these are two very different things. And I think, especially for me, because I came into social media and Mekla Mama as a mature adult, mm -hmm. I don't uh, have that battle so much. You know, for me, I'm very clear about, this is just a social media account. It's a social media persona. And my account has a very deliberate purpose. You know, it is just simply to convince other people that look, meklas and our textiles are fashionable. Even you can incorporate it into your own uh, dressing. That's it. So for me, I don't confuse, you know, my social media persona and life with my real life. And my real okay. life is any day much more important and takes most of my time. Online, off, or, online or offline, you're always this elegant. Hmm. Not bad. <laughs> Probably the definition of elegant. Right. Oh dear yeah. God, no. I'm You're so chic. Yeah, absolutely. But thank you. Yes. Yeah. I, I... So many eyes are on you and you know it. What's the worst thing about being famous? 
Oh dear God, I'm not famous at all. Not you at all. are already. No, not at yeah, all. A lot you of can't people. Deny no, I, I, I will not. No, dear God, no, I'm not famous at all. But one thing that I uh, did you do ask you me like what, or, what's the worst thing? Yeah. Do you like or don't like being famous? You like being famous? Eyes on you. I mean, dear have God, you enjoyed no. all the fame you got? Um, Obviously, you wanted it, right? I'm not. I'm not going to say fame as such. But the thing is, you know, you as wanted in, to be well known. Definitely, it it it's allowed me to con uh, come into contact whether it is in in real life or through you know social media dms etc it's allowed me to come into contact with many wonderful yeah, right. people and have great conversations you so want that's to be... a big plus yes now you're recognized everywhere right no, when you're not doing your groceries not or... necessarily no 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 not necessarily maybe no, by I'm, more I'm very, young, I'm very sure. young women maybe i met but... some of your fans <laughs> just the other day <laughs> And they're like screaming, oh, there's my clown. No. no, seriously. <laughs> no, even even today when I was on my way to here uh, mm -hmm. to come. Uh, That's why. Basically, a lady friend of mine, mm. we were having a discussion. Right. And she was like, oh, really? I'm a big fan of her. Kind of. And Girls and boys alike. That's, that's the fake. A true story. That's, that's and very everybody nice. does that actually. That, and basically, nice. mostly the uh, younger women, like you see. Yes, yes. And uh, ladies, of course, men, mm -hmm. definitely, everybody loves you. Oh, As a celebrity, you, do you feel, I mean, safe or secure or can you, are you free out on the streets? <laughs> Absolutely free. And the thing is, I guess, if, I mean, if, if you want to use the word celebrity, I think one of the uh, wonderful things about being a Naga and living in Nagaland is we all know each other, you know, so there is no such mm -hmm. thing that, you know, as in just, I mean, is, can we actually say that somebody is known more than anyone? Um, you but, know, I'm born and brought up in Kohima. Right. Most of the people in my neighborhood, in town, these but are the people I've seen my whole life. So we know each other. It honestly no, doesn't no, matter. We know each yeah. other, obviously. Mm -hmm. But the flip side is, people mm -hmm. are going crazy over you. So, mm -hmm. that's yeah. what? Um, no, I, 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 Your sales is taken to... at every grocery store. Oh dear God, no, no, no. There are people, Seriously? No, 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 no Seriously? not at all. Never, never. never. Naga people She's are lying. Very, She's lying. No, no. <laughs> We're very polite, you know, that way, none of this nonsense. No, we're no, polite, no, never, never, but never. But on the other side, we're too reserved in a yeah, way. Yeah, reserved That's what and I yeah, see. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. basically, they don't open I up their mind. Right. They want it, yeah. but they don't do it. Maybe, right, yes. yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And you are a yeah. very modern lady. We are we are conservative, right? Yes. We Nagas. Mm -hmm. Why? Oh, so what do you think about so that? Many Is it our something like uh, an inherit from. I mean, yeah. Oh, we're conservative it, for so yeah. many reasons. It, you huh? know, we're. Do you have any tattoos? Uh, oh dear God, no, no. Is it no, no not judgment. To that right. No judgment on people who have tattoos. Of course not. Yes, of course it, to not. each his own. Everybody's allowed, uh -huh. but I don't have tattoos uh -huh. uh, myself. Really? And yes. you have a problem with that, or I no, mean, no. to each their own. Tattoo I mean. culture in our state. Right. It's happening. I myself want a tattoo. Right, yeah. right. I have everything. You, you don't have one yet. Not yet. Okay. I have everything sorted out. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I discussed with Medo. Yeah. It's we did. a mermaid. Yeah. Pink in color. And <laughs> I'll have it on my calf. Yeah. But it's written, don't tattoo. Yeah. So that's what, that's the yeah. only reason why we don't do tattoo. Or right. else we would have all over our body. But uh, tattoos are very much part of our traditional culture. Sure. I mean, not all tribes, but right. you know, a great number of Naga tribes uh, have tattooing as part of their culture. Yeah. Yeah. And that also not just men, but women also. So, um, you know, you can question whether you're doing so something that is deviant, you know, or deviating from traditional culture or whether you're actually returning back to you know, some kind of uh, traditional cultural practice if you get a tattoo. Of course, a mermaid, uh, that, that level, maybe that, that'll be yeah. a modern tattoo. Yes. But we actually have some beautiful traditional tattoos as well. Sure. Mm. I really want one. Uh, but it, it, that's a taboo. I mean, no, not at all. I mean, like it I shouldn't said, be, right? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's part of our traditional culture. Mm. Some tribes. Yes, yeah, some tribes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, since you're the Mekala Mama, are you a professor who is into fashion or a fashion icon? Who's a professor? What are you? I'm a professor and I think uh, I'm an academic of fashion as well. Oh, yeah. um, a lot of my research has to do with contemporary Naga culture, youth cultures. Oh. And, um, you know... So you're a professor first and then... Yeah, yes, I, I'm, I'm an academic, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
and uh, I, um, a lot of my research, I have a PhD in cultural studies. Mm. <clears throat> I look at identity and, you know, uh, whether it is traditional culture, because for mm -hmm. us Nagas, you know, right. our fashion, if you call whatever we wear and how we dress and style ourselves, mm -hmm. this is what we understand as in a way fashion. So whether it's traditional fashion, the way our ancestors used to clothe themselves to convey certain identities, mm -hmm. or whether it is the way we clothe ourselves now, you know, mm -hmm. All of it has to do with identity. So, uh, you know, fashion falls under the gamut of the kind of research that I do. So you're... That is amazing, actually. Mm. So what you do is you teach and then you promote uh -huh. cultural identity. You promote traditional things. Yes. In a, in a way, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Mm, that's why the Makala Mama was born. Yes. <laughs> mm. See how I did it? <laughs> She's, of course, she's born with a purpose. Have you she's modeled before, that. before back dear in God, high school? No, no, never, 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 never. You have never thought about it. Oh, dear have God, you, no, no. Why will would you? I? No way, no, no. If you were given a chance. No, no. That, that's, I mean, uh, there, there are women who are sort of born and made and sort uh -huh. of, uh, or work hard to become models. Mm -hmm. But you're so, natural. N yeah. No. I am a huge... Dear God, no. No. I'm a huge Madonna fan and she still looks yeah. stunning. Oh, mm, okay. Wonderful. Her. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you will never model? No. Never, ever. My purpose is actually, you know, my even my uh, media, this uh, social media avatar, the mm -hmm. purpose is not to sort of, uh, because when you, when you think about model, you're actually thinking about portraying some kind of maybe feminine ideal, mm -hmm. you know? which is fine okay that's also a thing but i think what i want to present myself is i'm a regular working woman mm -hmm. who is fashionable and right. trying to you know show myself mm -hmm. and my body as you know something that can be fashionable uh -huh. so i think i am very specifically i'm trying to uh, promote uh, body positivity i'm trying to promote you know sort of a more inclusive idea of what a woman should be so mm. uh, you know if you think of a woman yeah. who is beautiful then perhaps it need not always be a model you know it can just be a regular woman it could be a mother of four right. it can be a working woman yeah you know? so that's what i'm trying to and still look hot you you yeah. are already a mother of five five four four, four. yes and you still look <clears throat> you look more beautiful than than the, the than, the, than the regular uh, models that, uh, of our state. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. I guess. Speaking of fashion and clothes, I mean, you wear them every day. Mm -hmm. You post them every day on your account. Mm -hmm. You buy all of your clothes, or some of them are sponsored, or you. Right. I'm get very gifts. lucky that way because Mekla is actually very expensive, right. and um, I have a mother who also really uh, appreciated. In fact, she was a weaver when in her young in in her youth. So Interesting. Um, she was a woman who really. But you know, it's not just Mekla's. You know, uh, one thing that I must say about my mother, I really, you know, she's in a way my hero. Mm. But she's a woman who has never. Um, she's a very frugal woman. She's not an extravagant woman. You know, and I think from uh, when she was very young till now, she is somebody who knows how to take care of what she has. You know, she values what she has. Uh -huh. She maintains and uh, collects good things, not many things, mm -hmm. but whatever she collects, she keeps in good condition. So I am a very, very lucky daughter because right. I enjoy that legacy. Mm -hmm. When she retired, she gave me most of her meklas. Mm -hmm. So most of the meklas I own, I have not spent my own money on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so wow. this is something sure. that everybody must know you know it's I don't have that kind of money to spend uh, but uh, in terms of the collection that I am trying to build myself my own meklas what I do is I focus mostly on investing in traditional pieces mm -hmm. because as you all know uh, right. you have you know two types of textiles uh, in Nagaland, you know, one is the contemporary textiles, the, you know, fashionable meklas and shawls, mm. etc. And then the, we have all these traditional weaves. Mm. So each tribe has traditional weaves. So what I try and do is I try and invest my money in collecting these traditional weaves. And um, all your earrings are <clears throat> designer made? All my earrings are from uh, local, uh, most of my earrings are from local designers, mm -hmm. either in Nagaland or in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. um, 
Some of them, yes, I pay for, and some of them usually, all these designers are wonderful. So if I, if I pay for one earring, when they send it to me, they'll all usually give me two, two or three free. <laughs> right? right, yeah. But um, I'm, I try my best what to- What a life. Uh, yeah, I know, it, yeah. it is, it's a wonderful life. <laughs> right. I'm not going to complain, you know, I love it. Yes, yeah. so- um, Perks of being a celebrity. Exactly. I'm like, not celebrity that's what I, that's what I, that's what I You already um, know you are. Muslim and my class huh? also, I have got some as gifts. Yes. So I'm very lucky that way and I enjoy this, yes, that much. Wow. Mm. Yeah, like you said, your mom, your hero, I understand you come from a wealthy family. What's it like not to have needs, as in like financial needs, go in a store, buy everything you want? You know, this is a very interesting thing because uh, I'm not going to be modest or as in Angami right. we say Kathara. Yes, you know? yes, exactly. I'm very blessed to be from a family that has come <clears throat> from means. Mm -hmm. I'm very blessed to be par part of a very wonderful legacy. Both my grandfathers were very wonderful exemplary men mm -hmm. um, who Absolutely. played a very big role in society. Uh, so. Doesn't know and because of them, you know, we, their children and then now their grandchildren, we right. enjoy this kind of privilege. But one of the things that I appreciate about my parents is they've always raised, I, I'm the eldest of uh, three sisters. Three. Yes. So they've always raised us with this um, sense of social responsibility. Mm. They've always, you know, this, the, uh, you know, there's a verse in the Bible that says, to whom much has been given, mm. much will be asked, right. demanded. Right. And this is something that they have always told us. It doesn't matter what you have now, it doesn't matter how much we're giving, but it, none of it will have any worth if you do not give back. So my parents have always said, fine, we will give you what you want, we will make sure you're not in need, and one of the most wonderful things about being my parents' children is they never said no to me when I wanted books, you know? Um, so it's not like they had infinite money also. Mm. We were taught to be frugal, <coughs> we were taught to value um, how to spend money, etc. But the thing is that when it, came to book, well, when it came to books, they never said no, you know? So, um, but all of this was done for us with the expectation that we are doing the best for you, we are giving you the best that we can, but you need to give back to society. So this is, you know, um, this sense of great responsibility is something that I have and I, I can safely say my sisters have. So the three of us have been brought up with this sense of how can you be of value to society, how can you give back to society. And so, I mean, this is why I appreciate my privilege mm -hmm. and I admit my privilege. But as my parents have right. taught me, mm -hmm. privilege is not something you just sort of, um, it, it, it's not a selfish thing. It's privilege is not something you just enjoy for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. Privilege is something that you must use to uh, contribute back to society. Mm. What I heard was, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. you're a doctor. A PhD, yes, yes. Your other two sisters are also doctors. They're medical doctors, wow. yes. Damn. Yes, and okay. both my parents are doctors. Okay. Mm. That's a wrap. That's, that's <laughs> a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> how, 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 how can this happen? <laughs> is, is it, this is very unfair. Is this legal? No? <laughs> right. Is, is, is this legal? I mean. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. But uh, I mean, as in, see, the, the, the perfect the, family. How, how fortunate, how amazing. Right. No, but a lot of hard work has gone into this. Yeah. You know, a lot of, sure. of hard work has Absolutely. gone into uh, my getting my PhD. Right. A lot of hard work has gone into my siblings getting their degrees. Your sisters, doctors, as in right. like they're into what? Uh, my, the, the one after me Please is an elaborate. oncosurgeon. She, she's the first uh, oncosurgeon from the Northeast. Wow. Um, that's a cancer surgeon. And mm. uh, my sister is a gynecologist. Yes. So, yes, but th this is the thing. My parents said, okay, we'll make sure you're comfortable. We'll give right. you what you want, but you have to give something in return. You have to study hard. You have to, you know, um, get degrees and become people who will contribute to society. So, so that yeah. means you like being pampered or not really, or you're the spoiled one? I, I, we, uh, you know, yes, like Wh whatever it is, my, my parents have taken care of us wonderfully. I, I could not ask for better parents. Sure. Uh -huh. Yes. So yes, I am pampered. That so way. you were you were taught and groomed well. Yes, and you were I, raised in yes, such a manner. Yes, yes, yeah. 
Do every you? day, and especially now that I'm a parent, mm -hmm. you know, every day my admiration and my gratefulness to my parents grows. Mm. Mm. You said your mom's your hero, but apart from your mom, who or what are your influences growing up? My influences? In your PhD as a professor or as mm -hmm. the fashion icon mm -hmm. that you are, what influenced you? Or um, Growing up, you know, I've always admired teachers. So I have a, how to say, she, she'll be my cousin by relation, mm -hmm. you know, but she's actually the age of my father. So he, she's actually my second cousin. Be. So she was a teacher and, uh, you know, what a wonderful, it comes around to a full circle because she, uh -huh. she was actually somebody who was teaching in Kohima College. Oh. So, and we went to the same church. So I, I just used to admire her because my mother used to say, see, she's a teacher. You know, right. wow. and I used to think, wow, what a, you know, how wonderful it is to be somebody who teaches. And then my aunt, my mother's younger sister, she also was a, a, in the Department of Higher Education. She was mm -hmm. the principal of Fazal Ali and she retired as the director wow. of higher education. Mm -hmm. So she was also a teacher. So I admired her very much. So um, I, I, I think I've grown up admiring uh, women who taught. Also because for me, I was somebody who always wanted family. Mm -hmm. And I love that, you know, this was a career where you could balance both mm -hmm. if you try very hard. Yes. <laughs> so uh, these are the people I Nothing admire. Nothing comes for free. No? <laughs> <laughs> all your, yeah. the people you admire, all of them, they're females basically. Are you a feminist? I am a feminist. Mm -hmm. A very proud and happy one, yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm. Are you a romantic? Yeah, no. I Not romantic. I, I wouldn't quite. But you are outspoken, right? When I need to be, I think, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because basically people might be like, uh, when you go out, when you go to uh, socials or <coughs> public areas, mm -hmm. people knows you, they mm -hmm. want to talk to you, mm -hmm. but right. they might be scared or afraid or... Oh, that way, no, I'm yeah. very friendly. So, I love meeting new yeah, people. Yeah, you're very friendly. Mm -hmm. I love meeting new people. I love learning about people. And I think that's one of the reasons why right. I went into research. You know, um, I, I went into research and the kind of research that, that I do is qualitative research, mm -hmm. which involves, you know, field work and right. in-depth <coughs> interviews and uh, yeah. something we call participant observation. So these are things that, you know, really uh, are, you know, suit my personality. Sure. So, you know, if and this is something because uh, sometimes on social media, I do get uh, DMs that mm -hmm. say, hey, mm -hmm. I saw you, but, yeah. you know, I didn't. And I, I tell them, no, next time you must, you must come. <laughs> I would love to meet yeah. you. I would love to uh -huh. get to know you. I would love to talk to you, mm -hmm. you know, less about them getting to know mm -hmm. me. I love, uh, you know, um, yes. Listening to people's stories yeah. and you know, etc. Mm -hmm. Which is why I've said I would love to maybe off camera, but right. one day I will interview you because the few things <laughs> you've told me about yourself are so fascinating. Wow. Yes. So fans, she yeah. says she's friendly. Yes. She's friendly. Don't hesitate to take a selfie. You can talk to her, yeah. yes. Talk to her. Yeah. Take a sel take a selfie. She's all for it. Yes. Selfie, but the price of that selfie is that uh, you'll probably have to tell me your life story. It has to, you know, <laughs> there has to be an or exchange. she can wow. autograph your t-shirt or... Uh, <laughs> please autograph mine! <laughs> yeah. you say something on that? The photograph? The autograph? Or... Oh, yeah. <laughs> From her, her fans? Yeah. Why, why not get an autograph on my chase? Her, I would love to do that. And I'm sure a lot of crazy friends are there who wants to do crazy stuff beyond that. Speaking of modern, like like I mentioned, you are very modern. Living relationships are still st we still consider that a taboo in our society. Mm -hmm. I mean, you want right? I don't see a problem in that. Okay. In my case, mm -hmm. should that be a problem? You know, I'm not if going to. Two people love each other. Right. Yeah. And the. They want to share the same room, the same apartment. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if you love each other. Yeah. This is a very strange switch of topic. But the thing is, you know, I think when it comes to that and many other controversial issues, uh -huh. I think the people who are doing it have <clears throat> their reasons for doing it. And if they're adults, I don't think, uh, you know, it's for us to judge. Right, exactly. And so I will, who I, I'll are, leave it Who the hell are we to judge? Who, yeah, who are we to condemn, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. As they say, you know, I cannot cast the first stone, so it's yeah. up to them. 
Very if, wise. We, if just in case, if you were in that position, mm -hmm. will you go for it? Well, what that's the say? thing. We only, uh, uh, you know, I think whether it's controversial things, since you've, you've chosen live in relationships, but right. there's so many other controversies, uh, you know, in our society, mm -hmm. you know. Bigger things we need to deal with. Bigger things. Rather yes. than poking so our nose right. of two person yes. living in. But it's, What's uh, the big deal? you know, whether it's living in, whether it's, you know, sort of many other controversial issues. Well, we are not, you know, none of us can say if I was at in that person's shoes at that point of time, mm -hmm. none of us, I think, can say for certain that I would not do it, you know, so this right. idea that I would never do it, why are they doing it? Uh -huh. This is something that's really dangerous because, you know, right. it leads to, you know, sort of judgment. It leads to a kind of, you know, sort of uh, righteousness that uh -huh. I think mm -hmm. is actually, you know, goes against, um, yes. you know, the, Christian the, empathy and principle, you know, so, I mean, just, just to just simply quote Jesus, let him who is without sin, you know, right, so right. It, if they're going to do it, it's, you know, it's not for us to judge. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, I mean, of course, if you're going to murder somebody, yes, let us judge and let us stop them. <laughs> right, but, yes. you know, for matters like this, I think, um, yeah. you know, I have no say and it's not my business right, to judge exactly, anybody. Yeah. Exactly. We used to brag that we, our state, it's like 95% Christians. Mm -hmm. But most of us are holier than thou. Yeah. <laughs> Self righteous. Now we're coming there. Yes. Oh, God. No, I. Right? Mm. Because okay. for me personally, I'm down for it. I, I'm down for a living. I was I'll about to it. ask you. So, but I'll that's what you're saying. You, you, you. Now, see, that's the reverse. Is here yeah. you're saying I, I will do it. But yeah. perhaps you never know when you get to that point. You may say, No, I don't think I want to do it. So whether it's you know when you get to that point, some of us may say. Yes, some of us who say I will never do it mm -hmm. may might say do I it. might do it, might do it. Uh -huh. and yes. some of us who point. say yes yeah. I will yeah. do it may you not got a do point. it. Depends on the situation. Right. I believe you are the right person mm. to express exactly yeah your exactly. views. Mm. Because I don't think there is no other such people who mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. express freely like this right. without any... <laughs> no other modern lady. Yeah, no other no learner here or nothing as such. Huh. You are the best. Not just modern but it's ultra modern. Right. Yeah. This, I mean, I'm not saying you go ahead and do it. I'm exactly. just saying whatever they want to do, That's we shouldn't why. judge uh, what what they decide. Mm. So it's as simple as that. Yes. Okay. The serious stuff are over. Can we play a little game? Okay. It's called Let Me Know. Okay. It's a series of questions I'll throw at you. Mm -hmm. You can just shoot. It's called Let Me Know, right? Okay. It's a Q&A, not a rapid fire round. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be like inside one second. Okay. Just. You can take your time. Yeah. Sit back. Question number one. You ready? All right. <laughs> <laughs> for, every, for, for every correct answer, you get 10,000 points. Okay. With uh, my class? No. <laughs> if you won. <laughs> Next time we'll oh, oh. Please ask. Please ah. ask. Question number yeah. one. Hmm. In no particular order, okay? okay? If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Here. I'm very happy <laughs> living. I am. Okay. I really mean it. This is, you know, oh, it's where the heart is. for me, you know, my nice. name is Teyesinho, which, mm. you know, sort of very roughly oh, really? translates is, you know, know your people, know your roots. Ah. And it's, it's amazing because, you know, Angami culture, our names don't just, they're not just words. They, they mean something, the messages. And this is a message my, my grandmother named me. And it's, it's, you know, sort of, so it's, it's almost prophetic. It is self-fulfilling in terms of prophecy. But I feel most at home, I feel most calm, and I feel most um, sort of energized and invigorated when I'm home. So for me, it's, <clears throat> I would live here. What's the most valuable thing in your life? The most valuable thing in my life is um, my, my children. <laughs> good one, good one. The best advice you ever received so far? The best advice, you know, I'm going to answer this in a very strange way. I'll tell you about the worst advice I've ever received. The worst? Yes. Mm. Yeah. And the worst advice I've ever received is uh, um, be realistic. <laughs> That's the worst advice I've ever received. And I think my whole life, mm. um, what I do is I, I try my best to disregard that advice actively. So I'm always trying not to obey that advice. And so in that way, in a way, it's sort of inversely become the best advice I've received because I disobey it as much as possible. So why not being realistic? 
Because, you know, when um, I've said this in so many different fora, but, uh, you know, when you say be realistic, you're actually telling somebody not to imagine, not to to accept this, you're telling them to accept the status quo. You're saying, just accept mm. reality. Oh my God, no, just boy. accept. Just, just you know, don't yeah, think yeah. beyond. Oh. Just stay but inside the, the box. box. Exactly. Okay. Okay. But everything in life, you know, all the wonderful things that, that, you know, sense. we experience and, you know, makes progress, sense. human progress, right. human, I mean, even just something that is very important to me, which is religion, yes. you know, even Jesus, <laughs> if he was realistic, mm. we wouldn't, have the wonderful gospel we have today. He was the most unrealistic person in the world, okay. you know, in, in the cosmos. So, yeah, yeah. so be That's realistic so. is the worst advice I've ever been given. And I spend my every living and breathing moment mm. trying not to be realistic. Right, beautiful. Mm. What's your secret talent? Oh gosh, my secret talent? You know, um, I dance. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I love dancing. We, we should go out for dancing. Yeah. Please. <laughs> You're, yeah. Speaking of going out, yeah. what's your idea of a perfect date? My idea of a perfect date, you know, actually, I'm very blessed to have a wonderful spouse so with whom I've had, you know, many fantastic perfect dates. Right. And uh, one of the things that, you know, uh, I think keeps our marriage uh, sort of interesting and uh, alive is that we always make time to go for dates. So my perfect date is he yeah, has is, to be there. That's really important. Right? It's very important. After marriage date. So my perfect da uh, date is it have my husband has to be there. So I have to be on a date with him. And then, yeah, um, we find different fun things to do. Uh -huh. Preferably if there's good food. Right. Okay. Yes. What's your guilty pleasure? My guilty pleasure is I, I knit and I crochet. And that's a guilty pleasure because it does consume some time mm, yeah, and right. it does consume some money, right. but it's uh, something that really uh, mm. gives me calm and um, it's pleasure. Um, speaking of, you like to dance, what's your favorite song or songs? Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually somebody, I don't really listen to music actively, mm. you know, so uh, I love dance music, anything that has a good beat. Um, okay. Yeah, and maybe yeah. I mean anything. Uh, but I love dance music. I love pop music. I'm not intellectual about my music. Yes. Which one of the two? Mm -hmm. Being rich or famous? I like to be both. Yeah, but you said one of the two. I'll take both. <laughs> I'm lying. But if I had to choose, maybe fame would be better because I think you know, um, famous means you're either notorious uh -huh. or you've actually done something meaningful, uh -huh. and uh, yeah. Nothing like being okay. remembered. Mm. That's very unique of you. Mm. Your favorite childhood celebrity crush? Snoop Dogg. Really? Seriously? Yeah. Oh, come on. Yeah. We're in the same room now. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. D double G's. Yeah. yeah. If not a professor, mm -hmm. would you rather be? Um, if I wasn't a professor, you know, um, so interesting. Uh, if I wasn't teaching, what would I be doing? A model? Okay. being on magazine covers no i think i would i would have loved to be a stylist oh really yeah i would have loved to be a stylist maybe in some other life but yeah uh -huh. mm. but i get to do both now in in some degree you're already doing that mm. yeah what's your wildest fantasy my wildest fantasy you know that these going bungee jumping oh dear god no. <laughs> um, my wildest fantasy is to well anyway i even if it's so wild i hope it does come true one day is um, I'd love to go and live in different cities that have very, very beautiful libraries. I love reading, mm. you know, I'm oh. somebody who loves my reading and my books. So, um, yeah, to go and just for the sake of, you know, my, my, my idea of a perfect holiday would be to go to a place where, you know, you have like maybe Alexandria, which has, you know, a beautiful library or historic libraries, you know. Books is, yeah. is knowledge really power? It is. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What not, books not, do you suggest for a person for, like yeah. me? For, 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 for a rebel like, like me. As well, horrible at the same time, not a risk. Um, <laughs> you, oh gosh. Oh, yeah. s s I don't know. I mean, there, there are too many. I can give you a list ah, later on. Yes. I like, on a personal note, I like, like, I like Charles Bukowski. Like I like Charles Bukowski. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Okay. Mm. So, but enough about me. You're mm. the celebrity one. Mm. Down to the last question the impact you want to have on society? 
I think, like I said earlier, you know, with my parents, is uh, you you want to leave the world a better place, you know, and especially now that I'm a parent, mm -hmm. it's become even more important, mm -hmm. you know, that uh, you leave the world a better place for your children. Mm -hmm. So something as um, essential, I used mm -hmm. to think was so essential as eating meat, mm -hmm. because as a Naga, I think meat is, you know, an absolute uh, sort of... Um, absolutely integral part of my diet, you uh -huh. know, and it's something I cannot give up. But now when you look at the world and you look at, as of now, here in our <coughs> state, mm -hmm. the way we produce our meat is actually really responsible, it is sustainable. Mm -hmm. But when you look at, you know, th the rest of the world, I mean, there are parts, I mean, as in, I, I tell my uh, friends who live in uh, America, I tell them, you know, once I step foot in that continent, I will not touch your meat because the way you mm -hmm. make your meat is just, you know, um, unconscionable actually uh -huh. you know so something like that you know when you think about uh, the world that you leave your children I'm actually even rethinking thinking about how much meat should I take should I not take meat mm -hmm. you know and uh, after looking at the kind of uh, um, impact seafood has had or is still having you know in global warming and the kind of secrecy um, that surrounds uh, the seafood industry um, and the devastating impact it's having on our environment, you know, so I, I, I don't take seafood anymore and I'm not trying to be, you know, sort of self-righteous, etc. Mm -hmm. But I'm just trying to illustrate that, you know, as in it's really changing the way I think about my lifestyle, my decisions. And fashion is also one uh, part of this is, you know, fashion is one of the most um, is an industry that is having one of the most devastating effects on our environment. You know, and this is something we don't talk about. So um, my promoting our textiles is also to make an argument for sustainable fashion. You know, so it's sure. not just uh, textiles, but it's also like most of my clothes are not new. I don't try to, you know, I'm, I try to uh, recycle yes. other people's clothes and I try to reuse the same clothes. I try wow. to repeat because when you look at... Um, you know, uh, sort of the tenor of uh, fashion influencers, it's always, hey, this is my new dress. This is uh -oh. my new, my new, my new. I mean, how much new can you have? How much of it can you have? Right. You know, at some point, if we want to make fashion sustainable, we need to start reusing, take pride in you reusing our clothes, uh, make it fashionable, you know. So all of this, you know, sort of ties in with, you know, what kind of impact do you want to make? Sure. You know, you want to leave the world a better place, especially for your children. Mm. Mm. It was so much fun talking to you. It You're was, the best. Yes. Thank you. Thanks to my celebrity guest, Dr. Teye. I'm your host, Dieto Shokriye. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Talk Epic. I'll see you around. Peace, guys. <laughs>